the Citroën C5 X7 comes equipped with two different types of brakes, Teves and TRW. The one we have available has the Teves brake system, so today we're changing front pads and rotors and starting by preparing the new parts, it's not a bad idea to rub the new pads on a medium-sized sandpaper just to roughen out the surface in case there is something from the factory. It's not really that essential, but it doesn't hurt either. That's why I recommend it. Don't forget to rub the beveled sides also if there are any. The rotors are another story as they need to be cleaned from the oil that is applied from the factory. They are usually cast iron and they rust easily, so they have a thin layer of oil from the factory to protect them during transport and storage, therefore they need a thorough cleaning both in the braking surface and the hub. I use and recommend carburetor cleaner as it cleans any metal surface from any oil or grime there might be, but any brake cleaner will do the job. Rubbing the rotors with the same sandpaper is totally recommended, even though here too is not necessary, but again, it doesn't hurt either. Before starting the job, set the parking brake and if the car has a hydractive suspension, raise it to the high position. Next, and that's kind of important, raise the car with a jack, secure it with a jack stand and upon removal of the wheel, place it under the car for extra safety. Safety is not a joke on this job, so take it seriously. Next, remove the nut number one and bolt number three to move that bracket that holds the brake hose, but no need to remove bolt number two. This will help us manipulate the brake hose better later. First, remove the retaining spring. Next, remove the two protective caps and unscrew the slider bolts. They come off better with a Torx 45 socket, but an Allen wrench can also do the job. The exposed part of the slider bolts will need cleaning, so again, carb cleaner or brake cleaner is recommended. Upon refitting, some recommend applying a bit of silicone grease to help it slide better, but I discovered that they also work fine when they are dry, so it's really up to you. With the help of a screwdriver and a bit of wiggling, you can remove the caliper and start removing the old brake pads and of course clean the area either with a dry brush or with a brake cleaner. I chose the dry brush method because I found it to be working fine, but I cannot stress it enough, be careful with dry brush because the dust is very fine and can enter the respiratory system, so always wear a proper mask. The proper tool is recommended to push back the piston, however, if you don't have the proper tool, an old pad and a pair of pliers will do the job just fine. Push the piston all the way back and check the brake fluid in the reservoir in case something goes wrong. Next step, remove the base bolts. Actually, we only need to totally remove the top one and loosen the bottom one enough to be able to extract the old rotor and place the new one. These bolts have some thread locking adhesive on them, so they'll be a bit tough to remove and it is recommended to use new ones, but if you can't find new ones, the old ones work just fine. We can remove the rotor by simply unscrewing the two small bolts that hold it in place. Usually these rotors get stuck, so a bit of tapping with a hammer from the back might be needed.
cleaning of the hub area is not a bad idea and we can commence the reassembly process by simply putting everything back in the reverse order. Citroen also recommends using new bolts here too, but again, the old ones work just fine. If you can find new bolts, make sure to use them. The tightening torque for these bolts is 7 to 8 Nm. Put back the base and secure the bolts. The torque for these is 110 Nm. Put the new pads in position, put back the caliper in its place and fit the guide pins. Tighten them with 27 Nm and don't forget the protective caps. Clip on the new wear indicator on the brake pad and route the wire around the brake hose to connect it to the corresponding plugs. There is no polarity on this wire, so it doesn't really matter how we connect them. One last check to make sure everything is secure and we can put back the retaining spring. This spring should also be replaced with a new one, but again, if you can't get the new one, the old one works just fine. Replacing it though is recommended. We can put back the metal bracket and the nut and bolt that hold it in place and tighten them with 12 Nm, secure the ABS wire and we can put back the wheel. Before starting the car, it is not a bad idea to push the brake pedal either by hand or with your foot so that the new pad comes in contact with the rotor. This way you won't be surprised when you step on the brake pedal for the first time with the new elements. And also you might want to check the brake fluid level one last time. And that's it, job done! Time for a road test. Start the car, lower the suspension to the normal position and off we go. There is one thing to keep in mind when changing pads and rotors and that is the running in period. During the first couple hundred kilometers you mustn't be hard on the brakes because this is the typical running in period. What that means is that the new pads and rotors need to mate to each other. When you first step on the brake pedal you'll definitely notice that you need to press a bit more in order to achieve the same braking effect as before. That's because the new pads haven't mated to the rotors yet. The new parts have different anomalies on their surfaces and as a result the contact surface is very small and therefore the braking is less. During the running in period the two surfaces wear out gradually and they form mating anomalies which in turn create more contact surface and the braking effect comes back to normal. That's why all manufacturers recommend that during the first couple hundred kilometers the brakes should be used gently and not hard so that the mating surfaces will be formed gradually and there won't be any abnormalities that might cause problems. Before leaving, I'd like to remind you the importance of safety, so always consider the car ready to fall and take the necessary measures to keep it safe when you raise it and be careful even when you secure it with a jack stand. Always work in a manner that will allow you to escape to the side in case the safety devices fail. Thank you very much for tuning in, be safe on the road and when working on your vehicle and stay awesome!